Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sana Kosar. I am doing my MPhil chemistry from Kaide Azam University, Islamabad. My specialization is in inorganic chemistry. So we deal with the problems in inorganic chemistry. Here is my first lecture about the general introduction of inorganic chemistry. Its region, its general trends discussed in the inorganic chemistry and how to remember these trends. Let's move on. Inorgan what is inorganic chemistry? It is defined as the study of the chemistry of materials from non-biological origin. It is the branch of chemistry that is opposite to organic chemistry. Now, what is organic chemistry? Organic chemistry is the chemistry that deals with living thing. So, the definition of inorganic chemistry becomes the branch of chemistry that deals with the non-living things. In organic chemistry, we study carbon and hydrogen atoms only, that are hydrocarbons. While in inorganic chemistry, we study all the elements in the periodic table except hydrogen and carbon. So, it refers to materials not containing carbon and hydrogen bond, including metals, salts and minerals. All the elements except carbon and hydrogen are studied in inorganic chemistry. Now, let's move to general trends in periodic table. The most commonly studied trends are of electronegativity, atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity trends. Now, first we will discuss electronegativity trend. Electronegativity is the force to attract the shared pair of electron towards itself. We know that um, among all the elements, fluorine has the highest electronegativity. It belongs to group 7A here, the halogen family. So, those elements that are close to fluorine have high electronegativity than those elements that are far from the fluorine. So, if we have to compare two elements like we have to compare aluminium and cesium. Among these two elements, aluminium have high electronegativity because it is close to fluorine atom and cesium have low electronegativity because it is far from fluorine atom. In this way, we can generate a trend that electronegativity basically increases from left to right in the periodic table. From lithium to fluorine, it in increases. Now, let's move to atomic radius. What is atomic radius? Atomic radius is basically the size of the atom. The size of the atom we know increases when the number of shells in the atom increases. And we know that number of shell increases down the group and number of shell remain constant along the period. So, helium is the smallest. That uh, Helium is the smallest atomic radius. So, those elements that are close to helium have uh, small atomic radius, while those which are far from the helium have large atomic radius. For example, we will compare chlorine with the frenchium. So, chlorine will have small atomic radius, while frenchium will have highest atomic radius. It will have uh, highest atomic radius among all the elements because it lies totally opposite to the helium atom if we compare the, all the other elements. Now, let's move to ionization energy. Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell. Means those elements that have loosely bound electron will uh, lose their electron easily and their ionization energy will be low. And those atoms which have tightly bonded electron cannot lose their electron easily and their ionization energy will be higher. So, helium, we know the noble group metals. Noble group metals have complete octet. They, their electrons are tightly bound. So, it, it is very difficult to remove electron from them. So, helium has the highest ionization energy. So, and the elements which are close to helium have high ionization energy, while those far from helium have low ionization energy. Here we um, compare oxygen with the potassium. Oxygen close to helium will have high ionization energy and potassium far, very far from helium have very low ionization energy. So, here the trend is also ionization energy increases along the period. Now, talk about electron affinity. Electron affinity is the energy released when an electron is added to the outermost shell. Now, which elements among the periodic table are the hungriest for the electron? 
we all know that these are the halogen family they have one electron less than the octet so they want to gain one electron very quickly to stabilize themselves in this way their electron affinity is very high so fluorine has the highest electron affinity among all the elements so those element that lie close to fluorine have high electron affinity while those far from fluorine have low electron affinity for example we have compared now phosphorus and uh, cesium for example phosphorus have high electron affinity and cesium have low electron affinity so the general trends trend for these are electronegativity increases from right to left to right in the periodic table atomic radius decreases from left to right in the periodic table ionization energy increases from left to right in the periodic table electron affinity increases from left to right in the periodic table there are some exceptions but these exceptions mostly lie in lanthanide actinide 3d series etc but the general concept about the trend is uh, this let's talk another concept in inorganic chemistry that is very confusing these two terms are valency and oxidation state these are two totally different terms considered in the inorganic chemistry in <clears throat> that are considered same but these are two totally different let's talk about valency first what is valency valency is the number of unpaired electrons number of valence electron number of bonds an atom can make combining capacity of an atom valency is basically the group number or the unpaired electron in the valence shell for example consider hydrogen lithium the group 1 elements they have one electron in the outermost shell so their valency is 1 beryllium has two electron boron has three carbon has four electron in the valence shell so their valency is 4 nitrogen has group number 5 so its valency is 5 also it has three electron in the outermost shell so its valency is also 3 same case with oxygen six refers to group number and two refers to outermost electron fluorine also has one electron in the outermost shell so its valency is 1 and also the group number is 7 so its valency is 1 and 7 both remember that valency has no positive and negative sign it has only a number no negative and positive sign and oxidation what is oxidation state oxidation state is the charge appeared on an atom after gaining or losing electron for example calcium alkaline group metal it has two electron in the outermost shell if it loses its electron it will form a cation with two positive charge on it similarly aluminum can lose three electron and have three positive charge on it the common mistake that the people do in writing these symbols is that you have to put the positive sign after the number not before the number a upic recommendation is that calcium two positive is correct not the calcium positive two so be be careful you have to put the sign positive or negative just after the number not before the number like oxygen can gain two electron to form an anion to oxygen two negative oxygen negative two is totally wrong so this is my first lecture if you like this kindly subscribe our channel allah hafiz